Hey everybody, I'm live. It's John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and CEO of Operation Hope. Also founder of Bryant Group Ventures. And for those who don't know it, Bryant Group Ventures, 25 years ago, almost funded Operation Hope. Was the first donation made to Operation Hope. My idea after the Rodney King riots came from my company. Uh, and I'm still backing the company today. I'm a member of Operation Hope, a supporter of Operation Hope. So yes, I'm the CEO of Operation Hope, but Operation Hope came from me being an entrepreneur and a businessman first. Um, and this is basically my, you know, I'm a philanthropic investor. I get all of my people together in the world, my growing family of relationships and friends to support this mission to change the world. Now, uh, if you have comments, I see some folks that already joined, you can put them right here. I will respond. Uh, hey, Mary from Alaska, nice to see you. Uh, if you have uh, uh, reflections and thoughts, you can add them here. You tell a friend, let them know that, uh, to, to join into this series either live. I'll be doing this for about eight or nine more minutes or, uh, or in the future. So people say, what is John Bryan about? Like, why is he doing this? Is he trying to run for president? Somebody said on the last comment, oh, John Bryan for president. Is he trying to be, run for mayor? Somebody wrote, move to New City. Oh, is he trying to be mayor? No, I am not. I do not want to be mayor. I do not want to be governor. I do not want to be U.S. senator. I do not want to be a politician. I am not running for president. All right? I want to help save my people. That means everybody. I want to help to spark a movement to change the world. Um, I want to be a disruptor, just like Steve Jobs was a disruptor. My role models are Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Ambassador Andrew Young, a sprinkling of Malcolm X. Fast forward today, Dr. Dorothy Height, who's a bad sister, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs didn't change the game, he transformed the game. He was a disruptor and changed all of our lives. So what am I about? Who am I about? Oh, I've been mean, getting this question my whole life. I don't know, John. I don't understand this dude. This dude. You know, first of all, <laughs> I don't need you to understand me. I mean, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to understand you. I'd like to get to know you. But my self-esteem doesn't depend on somebody else acknowledging me. It's not what people call you. It's what you answer to that's important. That's a Dr. Cecil Chip Murray quote. And never answer out of your name. And to argue with a fool proves there are two. If I don't like me, I can't like you. If I don't love me, I can't love you. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not going to feel good about you. If I don't respect me, I'm not going to respect you. And if I don't have a purpose in my life, I'll make your life a living hell. Whatever goes around, comes around. So luckily for me, Juanita Smith gave me a high self-esteem. So I know who I am, basically. But I think it's important for me to explain myself to others. Um, uh, uh, oh, thank you, Mary, uh, being the change in uh, uh, <laughs> Rakita, my cousin, I'm loving this live role you are on. Thank you very much. It's a series. I'm going to do, do this as a, unpack this as a series. Uh, I'm making my mark. LaShawn, thank you. Uh, Salim joined in. Hello. Carol joined in. LaShawn uh, joined in. Um, so we're, we're increasing this conversation, this new conversation around civil rights. So, you know, you know, uh, People, oh, he's a Republican. Why am I a Republican? Because I understand money? That's just so stupid. Oh, you know, he talks white. Huh? No, it's English. <laughs> it's English. You go to Japan, you speak Japanese. This is English, you fool. Uh, 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 oh, you know, he's a Democrat. Why am I a Democrat? Because I know President Bill Clinton? No, he's just a good man. I mean, he's just a good, decent man, right? So, I mean, look, uh, I have served Three U.S. presidents, Republican and Democrat, one of the few blacks who've been a commissioned officer for both parties. I have been honored by the last five U.S. presidents. It drives me crazy when people say, I'm not going to talk to him. He's a Republican. It, no, it's one president at a time. Hello, everybody. You know, people say, oh, why are you talking to that man? He was uh, when President Bush was in office. He said, well, let me think. He's the president? <laughs> I mean, you don't have eight of them. You know, three of them. And by the way, you talk to them, you find they're actually pretty decent people. You may disagree on policy. Uh, but you can disagree without being disagreeable. I'm going to tell you a real quick story about, about politics. So I, was, I brought President Bush into South Central LA and be like, oh, you know, why you got the president? Why are you bring a Republican to South Central LA? I said, well, first of all, this has been Democratic territory for 40 years. Not like we got this place as a panacea. Let's start there. Uh, he's the president, number two, and he wants to come, right? So anyway, uh, then people were telling Reverend Murray, who hosted the event, oh, you know, don't don't bring that man here. Then told the LA Times. They published it. So they, I get this phone call. Very prominent person. We don't want... Uh, uh, this guy coming to, the, to, to South Central LA, we're going to, you know, just suggest we shut down your event. So I said, well, you tell that person, very prominent, I, I agree with them. Um, if, if they don't want me to bring President Bush to South Central, I will just cancel the event. It was the next Monday. This was Friday. And the LA Times was listening. I said, you just tell them one thing. There was a private meeting with the president before the public meeting. And I had that person sitting next to the president. 
in a meeting of 18 people. Just tell them that, and but I'll cancel it if they are so offended. Message comes back, oh, no, 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 I, I was misinterpreted. This is a fabulous thing, translation. When it's not part of them, it's a bad thing. When it is part of the, them, it's a good thing. Try to include as many people as you can in your world. Uh, and, and so that's what I'm trying to do here is try to include you in my world so, so no one is uh, offended or, or threatened by it. I'm not trying to be a politician. Uh, so let me tell you what I am trying to do. I'm trying to change the world. I think this was a, there was a calling on my life from a young man, uh, and I was given some unique skills and talents and some gifts. And, um, and uh, I'm creating a battering ram for, for poverty eradication and empowerment. I think that civil rights was waged and won in the streets. Very necessary, very important. I wouldn't be here without it. But civil rights will be waged and won in the suites, whether it's an office building or a conference room or an academic room, a classroom, whether it's a church room, whether it's a hotel a, a, a ballroom, uh, wherever you are, the new movement's not in the streets so much, it's in the suites. And so while I respect all those who need to pick it, and I think there's a reason that to occasionally to pick it, we gotta upgrade our software and not just pick it. We can't just be about what we're against, we gotta figure out what we're for. We gotta build an economy, because even, even if you wanna distribute money like a socialist, you gotta first collect money like a capitalist. And we have got to create jobs and opportunity in our community. And civil rights has been with us, uh, you know, since the beginning of time. I'm going to do a separate video uh, just on the Freedmen's Bank. That's it. Why we worked so hard to get the Freedmen's Bank building renamed. It was, a treasury, it was a treasury annex building. Only the second time in history the building's been renamed on the White House campus. First time that a U.S. citizen caused the building to be renamed. Um, and on this point, I'll take credit. Me, we did that uh, at Operation Hope, getting the Secretary of the Treasury to inspire him to rename a building on the federal treasury, the White House campus was the Treasury Annex, it's now the Freedmen's Bank building. I'm gonna do a whole separate piece on that and why it was important. But that was civil rights back then, all the way up through Frederick Douglass. Then you get to Dr. King, his third symphony of his movement. He, he said, I'm here to redeem the soul of America from the triple evils of war, racism, and poverty. And, 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 and even his famous march, the march, I have a dream speech, the, you know, there was a march for jobs and freedom. We talk about the the, 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 the freedom part, we don't talk about the jobs part, right? And what did Dr. King say? say I'm here to redeem, I'm here to, I'm here to cash a check or to present a check marked non-sufficient or insufficient funds. That was financial, right? And so his last movement after war racism was poverty was the Poor People's Campaign, which no one talks about. I'm going to do a separate piece just on the Poor People's Campaign. And that was April 1968 when he was killed in Memphis, Tennessee. And we haven't had that conversation since. And when my book, the poor, How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, which everybody laughed at when I first wrote it, is now um, the only best-selling book in the world. Um, well, sorry, one of two. That's authored by an African-American. That's a bestseller in economics. Uh, and now it's been translated into Portuguese and Korean and Arabic and French and a couple other languages. And so I'm trying to spark a movement of civil rights to create a platform for the empowerment of the poor, the working class, and let me see if I'm talking to you now, the teetering class, folks with too much month at the end of their money. So whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you want to see some more green. Is that right? Whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, meaning race, you want to see some more green. Everything has economics underneath it. Everything in your life. You name something that doesn't have money at the root of it. And I will, I will, I will, I will buy you something special. <laughs> I mean, that's a nice, I mean, that'd be a nice ch challenge yourself. Name something. Um, Clarence says, great stuff. I like this format. Thank you very much. I will be doing it, not just weekly. I'll be doing it uh, daily if I can. Um, and, uh, you know, so we need to, like, get out of this fog that we're in. And we need to upgrade our software. And we need a new movement for a new, you know, you can't have a movement without young people. You got these all these young people out here with all this energy, but there's nothing positive for them to put it, put it in. So then we are surprised that they put it into something negative. Ambassador Andrew Young, one of my mentors, was talking about all the folks coming out today with these, uh, all this energy and all these movements calling this the civil rights movement. It's not. The civil rights movement uh, uh, was a strategy to achieve an objective. And every problem had to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, it may be civil, and it may be about rights, and it may be about civil disobedience. We cannot call it the civil rights movement or any other movement unless it's moving to a direction. It has to have a, uh, an objective at the end of it, and it has to be positive. If all you're saying is that you hate white people or you hate black people or you hate whoever, how do you expect anybody ever to agree with that? How do you expect to move any? Anger is not a strategy. You can't be black for a living or brown for a living or white for a living or Latino for a living. Uh, uh, and you can't be angry for a living. 
right? So if you want therapy, go see a therapist or go talk to your pastor or go talk to your husband or your wife or your friend, but you can't just go spewing all over the world all of your frustrations and hope that they're going to understand you and get along with you. I said, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love what Black Lives Matter is about. I love what they're about. But if we keep on with this narrow, tight cash strategy, we're going to end up with perfect justice and no jobs. So, I mean, who's going to hire you? All you do is just you show up angry. You're all, you know, your whole brand as a race is about the angry people, right? So, so this my work is about poor whites in the Appalachians. There's more poor whites than anybody else. Hello, we're all in this mess together. It's about struggling middle class families because it's the only generation where the parents think they're going to do the, 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 the children think they're going to do worse than their parents did, and the parents are not hopeful about the future for themselves or their parent or, or their children. It's the only generation. Well, you know, middle class used to be one parent working. It was, it was, you know, it was a, basically a blue collar job. The one parent stayed home as a domestic engineer and raised your children. Today is two parents working middle class. It's white collar, not blue collar, but you aren't making any more money. You've got too much month at the end of your money. So there's two ways to make money, make more, spend less. But no one gave us the memo on, on money. No one told us about free enterprise, capitalism, financial literacy. No one told us how to create wealth. And so we get stressed out and we argue with our mates and we get in fist fights and we get in, you know, we start doing crazy things like selling drugs and doing all kinds of stuff to make money. So, and then, you, and then you end up in a situation where you go steal something and now a brilliant person gets arrested, three strikes, now you've got a criminal record. Now the, now the bad guy really won. So I don't, I'm tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so I don't want to change the game. I want to reset it. I want to restructure the game. I'm going to get, obviously, I just gave you a very wide patina on civil rights. But if you're interested, because I'm at 11 minutes, go to operationhope.org. Go to my blog, johnhopebryant.com. Get into Project 5117, what we're doing with America's Uplift 2020 cities. We're in Detroit Uplift 2020. I'm putting 100 offices in Detroit. Atlanta Uplift 2020, I'm going to have 100 offices in my home city of, of, of Atlanta, 1,000 Hope Inside locations around this country. I'll tell more about that in a subsequent video. I don't want to overdo it too much here. But civil rights is a new movement, ladies and gentlemen. And if it doesn't feel special right now, historic, that's okay. History never feels historic when you're sitting in it. It just feels like another day. It takes 25 years to look back at a moment and go, wow, that was historic. And Dr. King had 70 employees. That's it. 70 employees in, in the SCLC organization, and he changed the world. He did it without firing a shot. We can change the world, but it has to be a vision and a mission that's big enough for everybody, and it has to be something that's positive. It has to be ultimately about something that you're about what you're for and not what you're against. Let's go change the world because we're all God's child, and you don't have to be president of the United States, a mayor, a governor, a city councilman, all good, by the way, to do it. You can be an average citizen, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, uh, and Mandela was president, but it was incidental to his uh, brilliance. Dr. King, Malcolm X, you go on and on and on. All these heroes, she was Dr. Dorothy Height, were not elected officials, but they caused elected officials to do the right thing. And in that regard, starting with Jesus Christ himself, changed the world. And the world will always remember them. Love you much. Make a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.